But today, sir, we are here to look at another subject, which is part of the three things within the UHC agenda. The first being, being affordable health care, the second being access to health, which we have been talking about, and through your political will, we have managed to create almost 20, uh, 25 hospitals in Nairobi, 19 new, five engineered and, and completed, and another 50 that we are building across the country to create the issue to address the matter of access to health. But critically is the standards of health, not just the quantity of health, but also the quality you know, of health. And today, sir, this is the subject that brings us here together to ensure that we can upgrade the quality of healthcare. Your Excellency, when we talk about the curriculum, improving our curriculum, we are reminded of an African saying that says, when the sound of the drum beat changes, then the dancer must also adapt the step. Things have changed around us, Your Excellency. The world has moved on. In technology terms, the world has gone very far. This time round, technology is one of the key aspects in terms of digital health and all the other aspects that we are going to address. We are going to ask ourselves many questions, sir. We are going to ask ourselves, is what we are learning today what we should be learning? Is what we are learning today what is being taught elsewhere in the world? Is what we are learning today sufficient for the future? I therefore would like to propose a seven-point framework to all of you participants today. And this framework can guide us in understanding our performance and charting the way forward. This seven-point framework that I am proposing includes first, defining a framework for harmonization of training of healthcare professionals across the sector for increased global competitiveness and future job readiness. Under this theme, the conference should on one hand consider how we can leverage on regional frameworks to harmonize curriculum and training to support cross-border training and practice. In addition, the conference should identify the gaps in elementary teaching and learning which ought to be addressed to ensure that a solid foundation is established before healthcare workers undergo their academic and professional training. Moreover, the conference should consider how the capacity of tertiary education, technical and medical training institutions can be augmented to effectively deliver quality healthcare training. The second is determining strategies to strengthen generation and use of research, innovation, evidence, and technology to inform policy and practice for increased access to health services. Under this theme, the conference should consider how the adoption of innovative and technology-driven mechanisms that are educative and informative in training of healthcare professionals can bring our nation closer to the realization of this objective. The third is establishing strategies for health, workforce, optimization, 
through planning and forecasting. The fourth is to provide a framework for reimagining entrepreneurship and innovation opportunities for the health workforce towards increasing absorption of the same. The fifth is defining effective mechanisms for cross-sectoral partnerships and collaborations towards re-engineering the health workforce. Sixth is formulating necessary policy and regulatory frameworks to support strengthened training, development, and deployment of health workers in line with changing health needs. The seventh, enhancing governance in cadre recognition, schemes of service, and scope of practice for improved health workforce management and retention. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last two years, the world has been engulfed in a crisis occasioned by COVID-19, which has caused unprecedented disruptions across many sectors of our society. Arising from this pandemic, we know our medical professionals and healthcare workers across our country, our region, and the world over have had to bear unusually heavy burdens. Indeed, through the tireless efforts of our healthcare workers, the pandemic has largely been brought to the fore, has brought to the fore the pivotal role that you play in providing quality health care, and contributing to the general well-being of our societies. Therefore, as nations of the world join the global quest to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal number three of ensuring healthy lives and promoting the well-being of all, we are challenged to reassess the training framework for those who bear the first level responsibility in the delivery of healthcare. In that regard, this conference could not have come at a better time. Indeed, it marks a turning point in our national quest to achieve universal health coverage. Each epoch of our nation has placed a unique set of demands on the skills and competencies needed in the workplace, which in turn has required us to reform and to recalibrate the content and architecture of the training we provide our healthcare workers. Today I note with satisfaction that the conference will review key planks that can lead us closer to harmonization of the curriculum for health professionals training. And it is in this context that I invite you now to join me as we take stock and reflect and learn and in particular plan for the transformative changes that governments should adopt in the training curricula for healthcare professionals. I cannot overemphasize that this conference has the task of providing a trustworthy account of the quality of our healthcare training. That account must give us a picture of what has worked and what has not, and the reasons why. The primary purpose here is to tease out lessons learned as well as best practices. But more fundamentally, we must ask ourselves, given the lessons learned, what transformative changes should we adopt? And do we have mechanisms 
of ensuring that these changes are optimally implemented. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last two years, the world has been engulfed in a crisis occasioned by COVID-19, which has caused unprecedented disruptions across many sectors of our society. Arising from this pandemic, we know our medical professionals and healthcare workers across our country, our region, and the world over have had to bear unusually heavy burdens. Indeed, through the tireless efforts of our healthcare workers, the pandemic has largely been brought to the fore, has brought to the fore the pivotal role that you play in providing quality health care and contributing to the general well-being of our societies. Therefore, as nations of the world join the global quest to achieve the Sustainable Development Goal number three of ensuring healthy lives and promoting the well-being of all, we are challenged to reassess the training framework for those who bear the first level responsibility in the delivery of healthcare. In that regard, this conference could not have come at a better time. Indeed, it marks a turning point in our national quest to achieve universal health coverage. Each epoch of our nation has placed a unique set of demands on the skills and competencies needed in the workplace, which in turn has required us to reform and to recalibrate the content and architecture of the training we provide our healthcare workers. Private hospitals are referring their patients to some of the public hospitals because some of our public hospitals are even better equipped than some of the private hospitals that we have had. And what does all this investment mean? It means that if we continue to improve these services, we save this country money, we save our people money, which can be put to other use. We know how health has bankrupted many families, many, many families, because there is nothing you can do. But now we are beginning to provide those alternatives. And what we must make sure is that we have the caliber of professional health worker that is able operating within the environment we are providing in upgrading our hospitals, that we have trained men and women who can utilize this equipment and provide the best healthcare systems comparable to any part in the world. And I'm sure we can, because again, as our friend has said, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, they wouldn't be here trying to get our nurses to go and work in their hospitals if we were not producing good quality people. We are producing. What we need is to ensure that the skills they have are equivalent to the kind of technology, as Waziri has been saying here, that is available out there. And they, in turn, will be able to provide our people with the same level of service as they are capable of delivering out there. There are many saying, ine muache kujipiga. Tumesonga. Tumesonga. A story ya watu huko kupepeta pepeta huko kwa mikutano kuongea mauongo huko. Iwezi badilisha yale yamefanyika. Tunaelewana wenzangu. Let us remain focused. 
let us remain focused. If there are things that are not right, that's why you're here. To help us, tell us, here we can do better, here we can do better, here we can do better. Lakini mambo ya kuongea maneno matuputupu huko hakuna kitu unafanya. Yeah? Unaenda huko, tumefa, huko, una. Yeah? Kazi ya ifanyu ijui ya gari, nafanywa kwa maofisi, kwa mahospitali. Yeah? Ama ni namna gani wenzangu? Eh? Eh? Kazi inafanywa huko, huko 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 hospitali. Eh? Eh, na saendi huko kusimama kupiga mtu. Unajua mimi leo nimefanya ana, anaingia anaingia ICU, anaingia ward, anaingia theater. Eh. Akwambia jameni. <laughs> Hii dunia yetu ya Kenya tutaona mengi. Lakini ni sawa tu. Kwa hayo machache na mengi, it is now my distinct honor and pleasure to declare this conference officially open and I look forward very keenly to receiving the report of the outcome of your deliberations. Thank you and God bless you all. Asante ni sana.